Hello. Are you ready for tonight's story? Well, tonight we're going to read The Best Nest, and it's by P.D. Eastman. Are you ready? Mr. Bird was happy. He was so happy he had to sing. This was Mr. Bird's song. I love my house. I love my nest. In all of the world, my nest is best. Then Mrs. Bird came out of the house. It's not the best nest, she said. I'm tired of this old place, said Mrs. Bird. I hate it. Let's look for a new place right now. So they left the old place to look for a new one. This place looks nice, said Mr. Bird. Let's move in here. But somebody else had already moved in. So they looked at another house. This one looks nice, said Mr. Bird, and there's nobody in it. You're wrong, said Mrs. Bird. This house belongs to a foot. So they went on looking. I like this one, said Mr. Bird. It has a pretty red flag on the roof. I've always wanted a house with a flag, said Mrs. Bird. Maybe this place will be all right. But it was not all right. I guess I made a mistake, said Mr. Bird. You make too many mistakes, said Mrs. Bird. I'm going to pick the next house. And here it is, right here. They flew in. They looked around. Isn't it too big? asked Mr. Bird. I like this place, said Mrs. Bird. This is the place to build our new nest. They went right to work. They needed many things to build their nest. First, they got some hay. They got some soda straws. They got some sweater string and some broom straws. They got some stocking string, and they got some horse's hair and mattress stuffing. They got some man hair. Soon they had all the hay, all the straw, all the string, all the stuffing, all the horse hair, and all the man hair they could carry, and they took it all back to build their nest. Mr. and Mrs. Bird worked very hard. It took them the rest of the morning to finish their nest. This nest is really the best, said Mrs. Bird. I want to stay here forever. Mrs. Bird was, Mr. Bird was very happy, too. He flew to the top of his house. He sang his song again. I love our house. I love our nest. In all the world, our nest is best. He was so busy singing, he didn't even see Mr. Parker coming. Every day at 12 o'clock, Mr. Parker came to the church. Mr. Parker came to pull a rope. The rope went up to the bird's new nest. The rope rang the big bell right under Mrs. Bird's nest. Bong, bong, bong. Mrs. Bird got out of there as fast as she could fly. When Mr. Bird came in, all he could see was a mess of hay and string and stuffing and horsehair and manhair and straws. Where was Mrs. Bird? I will look for her until I find her, said Mr. Bird. He looked high. He looked low. He looked everywhere for Mrs. Bird. He looked down into a chimney, but Mrs. Bird wasn't there. He looked down into a water barrel, but Mrs. Bird wasn't there. Then he saw a big fat cat. There was a big fat smile on the cat's face. There were some pretty brown feathers near the fat cat's mouth. Oh dear, Mr. Bird cried. This big fat cat has eaten Mrs. Bird. Mr. Bird flew off. I'll never see Mrs. Bird again, he cried. It was getting dark. It began to rain. It rained harder and harder. Mr. Bird couldn't see where he was going. Crash! Mr. Bird bumped into something. It was his old house. That old, old house that Mrs. Bird hated. I'll go inside, said Mr. Bird, and rest here until the rain stops. Mr. Bird went in, and there was Mrs. Bird sitting there singing. I love my house, I love my nest, in all the world this nest is best. You here? gasped Mr. Bird. I thought you hated this old nest. Mrs. Bird smiled. I used to hate it, she said, but a mother bird can change her mind. You see, there's no nest like an old nest for a brand new bird. And when the egg popped open, the new bird thought so too.
poor Mrs. Bird. She didn't think she could be satisfied with the same old house. It was kind of boring to her because she'd been there too long. And so they set out to try to find another house. And you know, nowhere else was as good as the home that they had, especially when they were going to have a child. It turned out that the nest they had was the best. And it took them the whole book to figure that out. Sometimes we forget how blessed we are. We forget that all the things we have in this life are just really wonderful. We get used to them, and so we take them for granted, and we forget to be grateful for them. And sometimes we have to venture out and see what else is out there before we realize what God has already blessed us with is more than enough and is probably the best for us. And so the best thing we can do is to be grateful. Jesus tried to teach us that when he taught us how to pray. He said, when you pray, say thank you for daily bread. Just the stuff we eat every single day is a blessing. It is what we need, and we need to give thanks for it. Not everybody has daily bread, and so we need to work hard to make sure that everybody has daily bread. What we really need and quit looking around and trying to imagine something better when what we have is exactly what's right, the best nest. Do you know why Jesus would teach us to pray the right way, to be grateful for our blessings every single day? Because it makes us better people. And do you know why Jesus wants us to be better people? Because Jesus loves us this much. So God bless you. God bless you that you remember always that you are the beloved child he created you to be. Good night.